Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, good morning or good evening, depending on uh, what part of the world you're, um, you're calling in from. We're really excited to host this webinar to talk a little bit about the, uh, the boot camp and, and answer some questions um, so you know what to expect or if you're uh, maybe considering um, signing up, uh, this should really give you a good sense of what we plan on doing for the week. Um, so let me just walk you through the, um, through the agenda real quickly. Um, so today we, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about why an MIT Harvard um, Healthcare Innovation Bootcamp, um, what was last year's bootcamp like, um, what's the, 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 the ecosystem here, not only at Harvard Medical School, but also in the Boston area, um, what makes us so unique, and um, we'll tell you a little bit about our amazing lineup of speakers and bootcamp coaches. We'll also hear from an alum and a coach. Um, and I'm also going to cover a little bit our, our healthcare track that's new this year um, and really, really great, a great lineup. And then we'll get into your Q&A. So why have we decided to do a um, healthcare innovation bootcamp? Um, I have, and I'm, uh, you actually I haven't even introduced myself yet. My name is Paola Abello and I'm the director of innovation um, at Harvard Medical School Center for Primary Care. Um, and in my role, what I do is I support entrepreneurs um, and innovators and uh, help train them to become better entrepreneurs in the healthcare sector. Um, there is a ton of opportunity in healthcare, as most of you know, but it's also a very unique industry to, um, to be working in and to creating a startup. Um, there are things that you need to consider uh, more than you would in, in other industries. And, and so it's, it's a very mission driven um, area, but it's also a very complex area, no matter what part of the world you're in. Um, so when I met the MIT uh, bootcamp group, I, I realized it was an amazing opportunity to not only teach you the, the framework of innovation and entrepreneurship, but also to dive into what makes healthcare unique and what do you need to think about when you're um, thinking about starting a company um, in this area. Um, and in order to really make the impact that we all hope to make, it really needs to be a, a global movement and, and a global community, which is one of the things we also hope to create. So let's take a look at last year's boot camp um, and, and see sort of what it looked like. We, um, we hosted our first boot camp last August. We had 87 boot campers from over 30 countries. Um, and the teams worked on just about everything, everything from mental health, some worked on medical devices, diagnostics, um, wellness apps, uh, and medical education, among some other ideas. Um, and the industries are the backgrounds of the um, individuals who participated, spanned everything from those who were already in healthcare around hospital and healthcare, wellness and fitness, but then we had those that um, did not have a healthcare background. So that's something that um, should not stop you if you're considering coming. So we had the financial services um, representative, uh, also motion pictures and film and government relations. Um, so if, you know, this is also a great forum for you if uh, you're interested in healthcare, um, but uh, don't have a, a background or history in healthcare. Um, so Harvard Medical School um, and, and MIT, and there's some, are, are really obviously some of the top um, universities um, here, here in the US for sure and around the world. Um, and we have also a really great um, ecosystem in the area of um, biotech. Um, we have some great accelerators in the area. Um, and there are some other great universities here as well. So when you put all that together, it builds an, an amazing opportunity, even if you're here for a short time, to be able to hear from folks who are starting companies here, from faculty who are teaching students here, um, and really get to know um, the, the different aspects of, of what makes this place so unique. Um, in Harvard Medical School in particular, we have a very long history of innovation in um, therapeutics, and we are um, becoming more and more active in the non-therapeutics area as well, um, around digital health and, um, and medical devices as well. So um, really, I think just a, an amazing opportunity for those who are not from the area to come here for a while. Um, and what we do at the bootcamp is we try and bring as many people to you as possible. But if 
you know, you have the opportunity to, um, and I'll talk about the trek, which is um, one of the things we're trying to do in, in helping you to learn more about the ecosystem. But if you have an opportunity to spend a couple of days here before or after, um, there's also a ton of a ton to see and, and a, a lot of other uh, people that you might be able to connect with as well. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to Vimla, who's going to talk about the boot camp experience. Hi, everyone. My name is Vimala Palanaswamy, and I'm the Associate Director for MIT Boot Camps. Um, it's really exciting to see 90 of you on here live, um, and it's amazing. I mean, I'm seeing Portugal, uh, South Africa, Nepal, India, Nigeria in the chat. Um, so as, as Paula mentioned, and as you, you can see now, the boot camp is truly a global experience. Um, you'll hear more from Yuanbo, who is an alum of the healthcare boot camp from last year, and it will actually be joining us at MIT as a student um, later this year. And from Vanessa, who is one of the coaches, um, but also started as a boot camper a couple of years ago. Um, uh, so actually, Yuanbo, I think, is in Boston right now, just dropped off his, um, his son. And Vanessa is, um, I think it's 1130 for her in um, Sydney, Australia, where she is right now. Um, so we're truly um, a global team. This is really a global experience. Um, and, you know, the way the, way the boot camp came together, actually, this particular one was Paula and I met um, a couple of years ago. And... Um, I was leading the boot camp. Paula was leading um, innovation at the primary care center. Um, and we saw that there was just a real need in this area um, in terms of healthcare innovation. Um, and so that's how the first boot camp came about last year and um, why we're continuing to um, work together um, on, on different educational initiatives. So um, the boot camp started a few years ago um, in 2014. And um, it's, it's a way for people who are not um, enrolled at MIT or at Harvard to learn from the leading um, faculty and practitioners in the field. Uh, so we started with a just general innovation and entrepreneurship boot camp here five years ago. Um, it was a blended experience. So um, people started with the online classes um, produced by MITx, which many of you will have um, taken or are taking right now. Um, and then people who took that class wanted an in-person experience with the faculty and um, the entrepreneurs who were highlighted. Um, so we started really as an experiment, bringing together 50 people from all over the world who had taken these courses um, online and seeing if they could work together on teams, learn directly from the same MIT faculty who teach on campus and teach the online courses and um, from all of these experienced MIT entrepreneurs. Um, it was a huge success and we did, MIT decided to invest in it as, um, as an educational experience. And um, you know, we're, we're really delighted to have expanded um, the industries that we're working in by working with partners like Harvard Medical School. Um, so I'll, I'll get into the schedule in, in just a minute, but um, this is really a project-based experiential learning program. Um, so we really look at the boot camp as an educational experience. Um, we're not an accelerator or an incubator. So I know there were a lot of questions that came up um, in, in Slido that people had, were asking previously um, about whether you had to have an idea coming into the boot camp. And um, it's not necessary. A lot of people do have an idea, um, but part of the boot camp is also ideation. Um, so we actually ask you to come in with um, almost a, a, a as a blank slate. Um, so of course, a lot of you will have experience, will have ideas um, and expertise in particular areas, um, but we, we really ask you to, um, you know, uh, start from a blank slate and look at what are the, what are the possibilities? What are the, what are the problems out there in healthcare? Um, and where are customer pain points? and then build something, build a um, solution from that, from that problem that you've identified. Um, so uh, many of you will use this opportunity as a way to validate an idea or a problem that you have been working on. Um, and, and many of you will start something totally new that you discover with your team. Um, so it, it is a team-based learning experience as well. 
um, you'll see that uh, you know we'll have about um, 70 participants in this boot camp, um, coming from about 30 different countries, um, and much as uh, you know, pa Paula mentioned the backgrounds of um, participants last year. So there were um, medical professionals, doctors, both doctors and nurses. Um, there were researchers, uh, data scientists, engineers, all coming together. And so we we do place people on teams. Um, so we look at we're basically looking to um, create teams that are quite diverse and can learn from one another during the boot camp as well. Um, so we look at a number of factors. Um, we look at where you are, where you're from regionally. Um, we look for diversity of age on teams. Um, we look for a, um, background, different backgrounds in education and experience. Um, we look for gender diversity, just so everyone um, gets out a little bit out of their comfort zone and is able to meet a wider cross section of people than you might normally meet if you were forming your own teams. Um, another part of having the diverse teams is that um, part of the boot camp experience is actually learning from your peers. Um, we, we'll go through the schedule in just a minute and we'll walk through the different, um, the different parts of the week um, and the different types of learning, but um, a big part is re really learning from who it is on your team. Um, and over the course of the week, you'll be building the foundations of a new venture. Um, so, like I said, we'll start with ideation and then end up the week with you pitching to um, a group of experts who are used to evaluating um, early stage ideas in healthcare. Um, and finally, um, you know, we'll, we'll meet Vanessa a little bit later and she'll, she'll talk about being a coach, but um, all along the way you'll be coached by successful innovators who have gone through um, either MIT or the boot camp themselves. Uh, Paula, can we get the next slide, please? So um, this is the schedule. Um, for those of you who have um, enrolled in the boot camp already, um, this will be available to you through the Novo Ed platform um, shortly. I believe everyone will be um, getting on the Novo Ed platform um, today, by, by tomorrow. Um, so everyone who's, who's enrolled so far. Uh, so just to give you a sense, I know um, this isn't meant for us to go, go through section by section, but um, you know, just to give you a sense of what the week will look like and what we'll be covering and how we'll be covering it. Um, we'll be starting on Saturday afternoon. Um, we'll, we'll be at um, the Natural History Museum in Harvard um, and you'll, get, you'll, you'll register for the, um, for the boot camp. Um, you'll, we'll do a proper introduction. You'll actually meet your team through a activity. Um, and then, um, you'll go, we'll go directly into a team building exercise. Um, prior to the boot camp, um, you will also all, um, once you're enrolled, you'll receive a link to take the DISC assessment, which is a personality assessment. Um, you'll get the results of that and, um, we'll, we'll also do a debrief um, on that day about um, the DISC assessment and communication styles and how to, how to work on diverse teams. Um, so that will set you up for the week. Um, I see Wanbo um, shake, uh, nodding. That's, that's a change from last year. <laughs> so that's something new that we've added. Um, and then in the evening, um, you'll get to meet more of the um, instructors, the coaches, and the rest of your classmates. Uh, and then if you look at the next five days, these are really the um, content and project work days. Um, so if you look at the, um, the blocks that are in yellow, this is when you'll be having lectures from um, different experts within the field and professors from MIT um, who are talking about innovation or um, the cross section of healthcare and innovation. Um, Paula will be going more into who these actual speakers are in a, in a few minutes. Um, but that's a lot of the industry content um, that, that will be setting up the background for the healthcare industry, how it's different, where those opportunities are, will be happening um, during those yellow blocks that you see. The green blocks that you see are the innovation workshops. Um, and so this is where we'll start um, going into 
ideation, um, primary market research. So you guys will actually go out and interview um, people who are feeling um, whatever particular pain point you've identified within the, um, health, within the healthcare industry. Um, and um, this will also be the times that you're uh, learning how to work with one another on a team, how to resolve conflict, how to give, each other, give one another feedback. Um, you'll be working, um, you know, if we go through it day by day, the first day is really about um, opportunity identification. So looking at um, where, where the opportunities for innovation are, um, and we really take this problem-centric approach. So identifying problems, talking to people, validating and invalidating whether um, that's, a, that's a real area for, op, uh, for um, innovation. Um, the next day is about understanding your stakeholders. So this is not just the patient, but um, the, you know, all, uh, well, you, you'll see, um, or many of you will know that healthcare is um, a particular a peculiar industry in that often the end user or the patient is not the same person as the payer, the insurance company or whoever it might be. They're also um, often not the decision maker. So often it is um, a physician or someone else within the um, healthcare system who is um, the decision maker. So um, that all of that makes um, healthcare a more complex industry, and um, we'll go into how to really understand the different stakeholders. Um, on um, Tuesday, uh, we'll look at what the customer journey is. So by this time, you'll start to be thinking about a solution and um, how does the, um, the end user, the customer, how do they actually start to use your, um, your solution? Um, on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday, you'll start to um, look at the financial viability of this. Um, so again, within healthcare, um, the business models tend to be somewhat more complex, um, but understanding whether this has um, financial viability, your solution. Um, and then finally, on, um, on Thursday, you'll be pulling all of this together. Um, each evening, you'll have, um, you'll have deliverables that will help guide you towards this end process. And then Thursday will be the time to pull everything together. And on Friday, you'll be pitching to um, uh, experts in the field who have experience evaluating early stage ventures within healthcare. Um, so, and then you'll see the, um, the red and gray blocks in the, at the bottom. Um, those are when teams will, when you'll be working on your teams on your ventures. Um, so you'll see that team time often starts at least the first couple days after dinner um, and does go quite late. Um, so this will be a change for um, Yuanbo as well. Uh, last year, the um, deliverables were due around 2 a.m. Um, we're now aiming to have deliverables due around midnight, um, though coaches will be available to work with teams um, you know, past, past that time. Um, but it is, it is a very intense schedule. Um, there's a lot to do. Essentially, we're looking to, um, to do a, a, a semester's worth of project work in one week. Um, so this is also why it's really important to um, go through the MOOCs and have that background um, ahead of time because um, it, it, is, it is quite an intense week. Um, the final day you'll see on Thursday, um, it's in light pink, uh, mock presentations. Um, so this evening, the coaches will be staying up with you and helping you really get your pitches perfect. Um, so all of these, the evening sessions will be guided by these coaches. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the coaches, um, but I think Paola will now um, talk to you a little bit more about the, the speakers who are there in yellow. Thanks, Manila. Um, so I, I was really excited to be able to pull together uh, a really amazing group of speakers from the medical school and the Boston ecosystem. So when I thought about um, what I wanted all of you to, um, you know, to really walk away with at the end of this week, um, I, I thought it would be wonderful to hear both from uh, medical school faculty um, from different departments as well as um, entrepreneurs here in the Boston area on the ground um, building and, and growing their companies. Um, and we also have representatives from uh, the affiliated hospitals in the area as well. So I, I won't go into too much of the, um, 
uh, backgrounds of these individuals, but let me just give you a little, a little bit of a, of a sneak peek um, of what they'll be talking about. Um, so Ativ, uh, uh, Dr. Ativ Matora, he's associate professor here at Harvard Medical School, um, and he does a lot of work and research um, understanding the move that healthcare has taken towards consumerism. Um, and interestingly enough, he's done a lot of retrospective work um, as well, um, thinking about, you know, has this change been a positive or a negative um, for patients? And he also um, often advises startups and he is a big believer that startups should not be afraid of evaluating their idea early on. Um, that, time, that can sometimes be scary for startups if uh, what they um, think is working is not working, but he can, he can talk a little bit about that. And, um, and obviously you can Google a lot of these folks and Ateeb has written some great articles if you uh, wanna look at some of those. Um, Zuri Song um, on, on the bottom uh, corner here, he is uh, really a rising star at the medical school. Uh, he's a young faculty member and he is in the um, healthcare policy group. Um, uh, Zuri spoke last year and he's going to be speaking again this year and he's really done a, a wonderful job of explaining um, what are some of the important levers in healthcare that uh, you should really think about uh, moving in terms of really making an impact in, in, in healthcare. So he has this sort of uh, great delivery and, and understanding what it is your startup um, should be looking at if you want to uh, both be um, uh, an impactful startup, but also one that will get paid by the right people. Um, so really important topic there. Um, Zach Malcano, I work with very closely. Um, he is a uh, serial entrepreneur and currently working for a startup called Cognito Therapeutics. Um, and Zach has spent many, many years um, in the healthcare industry um, conducting, um, I guess what you would call like observations about what are some of the important needs in healthcare and how do you figure out what decision, what, um, what problem you wanna tackle. So I think that's a really important lesson as an entrepreneur thinking about there are so many different needs that you can work on. Where do you start? Um, how do you identify the right one to work with? Um, and then in the middle, we have Liz. Liz is a, uh, a, a entrepreneur here in the Boston ecosystem. Um, she's done a really wonderful job of leveraging um, the, the ecosystem here in Boston um, and being able to scale her her company um, and by using different sources of funding, um, bringing in a great group of advisors, being part of some of the local accelerators. Um, so you'll hear about her company, 3Derm, which focuses on teledermatology, um, but also about her experience as an entrepreneur and how she managed to, to be successful or find success in that. Um, and finally, we have Carla Small on the bottom left. Um, Carla is Executive Director of Innovation at Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, they have a, um, a large innovation group there, and they work a lot with um, both internal and external startups. So she can tell you a little bit about of, of uh, you know, what do they look for in startups that they bring externally into, uh, into the hospital. Um, obviously, a lot of the ideas that, that some of you may come up with um, will have to deal with working with large hospital systems, which can be quite complex um, in terms of figuring out how to get um, in the door. So um, Carla can share some of her knowledge and how she um, directly works with startups in the area. Um, and then, uh, and, and most of those speakers I just mentioned are gonna be sort of on the first half of the week. And then um, towards the, the, the second half of the week, we have um, this other amazing group of folks. Um, we have uh, Len who is a, a faculty at the medical school and, and also a co-founder and CEO of SIFT. Len is an expert in artificial intelligence and big data, and um, he is going to help, uh, help us think about sort of what is hope and what is hype in the AI area. So um, what, can you, what can we in a very short amount of time teach you about AI and, and, and how to think about it and what its impact is going to be in healthcare? I think it's, it's one of the uh, big buzzwords recently, um, but there's also a lot of confusion in terms of how much can actually be done using AI. So, um, so he's, he's really an expert in this area and we'll share his knowledge on that. Um, then we have, uh, we have Ida on the bottom left. She is um, a PhD, co-founder of Pioneer Technology. Um, she's inventing a, um, a new device which will make um, uh, uh, placing tubes um, in ears, especially in the pediatric or mostly in the pediatric uh, market uh, a, a better um, and uh, cheaper uh, a way of doing that for patients. Um, and she's also at the Wyss Institute here at Harvard. Um, 
And, uh, and, and again, she is, her idea is actually uh, still in the very early phases um, because we wanted to give you an insight of an entrepreneur who is just uh, maybe, you know, a few steps ahead of, of where you might be um, to, to learn from, from her in terms of what she's done to make that step from an early idea to actually building a prototype um, and how she's thinking about those next uh, really important steps that she's going to be taking. Um, and then uh, Jay Desai, he uh, is co-founder of Patient Ping. Um, and, and Jay's, uh, his company's been around for, for quite some time and they deal with um, communication for chronic, uh, or I'm so sorry, complex um, care patients, uh, managing communication between uh, physicians, specialists and specialists in primary care. Um, and he's done a, a really great job of scaling his company um, in a crowded space. And um, that's one of the reasons that I had asked him to come because I think it's interesting to see how someone um, who might have an idea that, um, that is similar to others in a crowded space, what makes him different, what makes him unique, and what's made his company successful in being able to scale um, and go sort of beyond the noise. Um, and then finally, we have Sunil Gupta, who um, is a visiting scholar at HMS, um, a, also a healthcare entrepreneur um, and author. And he's gonna be uh, sharing a really wonderful talk um, on how you get others to believe in your idea. When that, that'll be at the end of the week, which is perfect because it sort of sets you up to get you ready and inspired to pitch your idea at, um, at the end of, of the week. And now I'm gonna pass it uh, back over um, to Vimla to talk about, or I guess Vanessa to talk about the, uh, the coaching, which is an amazing and critical piece of the, uh, of the boot camps. Um, so actually I'll, I'll talk about the coaches, but before I realized I um, forgot to include a slide on who the instructors will be from, um, from MIT. Um, so I'll just quickly go through that. Um, so we'll have a, a couple professors and as well as Erdine Beshamov, who a lot of you will know from um, the MOOCs um, as the instructors in the afternoon. Um, so um, Erdine, who, who you will have known, worked, uh, works very closely with um, Eric Von Hippel and Bill Allette to um, develop the MOOCs that, that are the prep for the boot camp. Um, so he'll be leading us through a lot of the workshops in the afternoon. So those green sections on the schedule. Um, Eric Von Hippel, who uh, many of you will also know, is a pioneer in user innovation. Um, and he particularly will be talking about patient innovation during this boot camp. So a lot of um, healthcare innovation actually starts with the end user, and in this case, the patient. Um, so he'll be talking about um, how um how patients do innovate and how that can be diffused so um diffusion can happen either through um, non-commercial means or commercial means um, and so a lot of companies will often look to patient innovators to see um to identify innovation and to identify these opportunities and then we'll be able to either work directly with them or um or create a business to scale these innovations that are um that are truly addressing pain points from the patient's perspective. Um, so we'll have an afternoon with Eric um, to go over that. Um, we'll also have two professors from IMES. Um, IMES is the Institute for Medical Engineering and Science, which is a joint initiative between MIT and Harvard. Uh, so we'll have Professor Elazar Edelman, who is the director of IMES. <clears throat> He's um, also a practicing cardiologist um, at, uh, I believe at the Brigham. Um, so one of the Harvard hospitals and um, a uh, professor in um, uh, specializing on cardiovascular disease um, in, um, at MIT. Um, so he's also uh, an entrepreneur in that um, he's supporting um, education and textbooks for, um, with, for the medical field that are um, video-based and much more dynamic than, um, than written textbooks to, increase, to improve the quality of medical education. Um, we'll also have Professor Leo Selly. He's also a medical doctor um, who is also um, working at the Harvard hospitals as a physician as well. Um, and his area of expertise is healthcare analytics. Um, so he's worked with uh, a number of companies and a number of um, hospital systems across the world to make patient data um, 
to keep it private, but also to make it accessible for um, analytics to, um, to improve the quality of healthcare. Um, so he works quite globally. Um, he, he led a really interesting panel last year. I, I believe he'll be having a panel again this year of um, different people from his lab who are, different, uh, who are working in different areas of um, analytics to, again, identify um, what are those opportunities um, for innovation using healthcare analytics. Um, and now I'll, I'll get to the coaches um, who, as Paula said, are a really important part of the week. Um, and we'll actually get to hear from Vanessa in, um, in, in a little bit. Um, so I'll start with Ingrid Toppelberg, who's our head coach at MIT Boot Camps. Um, so we, we generally have a coach um, to boot camp uh, ratio of one coach to every 15 boot campers. Um, and the coaches work in pairs. So it's usually actually two coaches to um, every uh, 30 boot campers or um, six teams of five. And um, they're all, uh, all the coaches that you'll be working with have um, started their own businesses, um, are, you know, have been through the trials and tribulations of being an entrepreneur or might currently be there, I think as, as Vanessa will, will probably tell you. Um, so they've, you know, they, they've gone through this and they've, um, they've been quite successful in their journeys as innovators um, and can tell you, you know, are there to really guide you through this process um, during the week. Um, so it will be late nights for, for you during the boot camp, but um, the coaches will be there with you um, during, during that time. So Ingrid um, is a graduate of MIT Sloan. Um, she was a consultant with McKinsey um, and worked in private equity before business school. She continued on working with McKinsey after business school um, in her native Argentina, throughout Latin America, um, and then she moved to Singapore where she was working with a number of different companies there um, and has lived in <clears throat> San Francisco and Boston as well, um, working with um, ed tech companies. Um, she's also an executive coach um, and she just recently moved to Tel Aviv, but will be back for the boot camp in a couple weeks um, as the head coach. And so she works with all the other coaches to coordinate um, what's happening with all the teams, um, how the teams are getting through the deliverables, um, and really supporting them throughout, throughout the process. Um, and she's, she's an experienced coach um, herself. Um, next, we have Vanessa, who I'll just do a short introduction because she'll be talking to you a little bit, um, a little bit more. Um, Vanessa um, actually first was introduced to boot camps as a boot camper herself um, a year and a half ago in Brisbane at our innovation and entrepreneurship boot camp there. Um, prior to that, um, Vanessa was the director for um, uh, medical care at Cirque du Soleil for 10 years. So she was working um, with the athletes and with the rest of um, Cirque du Soleil to ensure um, the health of the performers and the athletes um, within the circus. And um, she actually instituted their injury prevention system. So using collecting um, data on injury and um, how that related to um, you know, uh, the, uh, the workouts and the routines um, and practice and exercise for the, um, for the athletes and how to um, create strategies to prevent um, further injury based on, based on that data that they were collecting. Um, she now leads eye ophthalmology, um, which is looking at diagnostics um, using AI and machine learning um, for healthcare, uh, for eye care issues, um, particularly in the developing world. Um, and she's also recently joined Boston Scientific in their um, global leadership development program. Um, I, and um, she'll, she'll talk to you a little bit more about her experience as well as um, experience working as a coach. Um, we have Jeff Sabados also, who is um, a graduate of MIT Sloan. Um, before MIT, he was a Navy SEAL. Um, he's, uh, since graduating from MIT, he's started several healthcare businesses. Um, so he's an example of someone who actually had no life sciences or no healthcare um, a background, um, educational background, and ended up starting um, several healthcare companies. Um, he recently, uh, Resilience X, which is his most recent company, um, was looking at uh, therapeutics for PTSD, and that um, Resilience X was uh, acquired just a couple months ago. 
Um, so now Jeff is serving as a consultant to a number, a number of life science companies um, and VC firms, both in Silicon Valley and in Boston. Um, then um, we have Chris Peary, who got his PhD at MIT um, several years ago in, um, in biology. Uh, Chris is also a serial life science entrepreneur. Uh, his first business, um, in which he was a founder, is Manus Bio, and they use um, fermentation to create um, natural flavors and fragrances. Um, so they've identified the compounds that um, that produce, you know, that produce the fragrance and flavor. For example, for grapefruit oil, um, they've been able to isolate that and then actually grow that in a lab um, using, um, using bacteria and the process of fermentation. Um, his most recent business is um, Vervio, and they're looking, um, this is a uh, business using, um, uh, using genomics to identify um, uh, new therapeutics in, um, uh, sorry, different, different proteins and uh, therapeutics with the, for pharmaceutical companies. Um, Chris is also an advisor to a number of other um, life science and healthcare companies. Um, then we have Hana Arayama, um, who it was the co-founder of Tenacity. Um, Tenacity was a business that came out of the MIT Media Lab. Um, so Hana was a student at MIT Sloan, and while she was a student, she engaged with the Media Lab um, and researchers there to um, look at the emotional well-being of how to identify the emotional well-being of people, and they ended up using this technology um, for uh, within um, call centers, and so they started to look at um, how to recognize and then support um, healthcare uh, um, call center workers um, with uh, through through this technology and improve their quality of life, um, improve um, rates of turnover within companies. Um, and she's, she's recently left Tenacity um, and has also been advising a number of companies and has been um, a coach for us at a number of boot camps. Um, finally, we have Nikki Agahari, who um, is, was, is also an alumni of our boot camp um, in Australia, the, the year before um, Vanessa was uh, was in a boot camp, so two and a half years ago, um, Nikki's business. He, Nikki comes from a healthcare business uh, background. Um, he was previously working for Medtronic while doing his MBA, and um, was working on a technology that could uh, prevent incontinence in the elderly. Um, so not physical um, causes of incontinence, but um, neurological. Um, uh, sources of incontinence. Um, after the boot camp, he uh, within six months he raised about a million dollars to take in, uh, incontinence forward. Um, he also went to Boston Scientific um, and is now working with Boston Scientific um, as a GLDP in their Global Leadership Development Program, um, but also on a joint venture with Boston Scientific and Inconfidence to um, to take that uh, to take that forward. Um, so these are the coaches who will be working with you um, through, throughout the evenings on your project work. Um, as you can see, they have a wealth of experience and expertise within healthcare. Um, they've, they've all um, worked, on, um, wor worked within the healthcare industry, started businesses um, in healthcare and, um, and well-being. So um, I think I'll hand it back to Paula um, to talk a little bit about the trek, and then we'll hear more from um, Luanbo and Vanessa. Great, thanks, Bim. Um, so the the Boston Healthcare Trek that is something new that we're doing this year, um, and we're we're super excited about this new offering. Um, it's going to take place uh, the, the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before the, um, the boot camp starts on uh, Saturday. The, I have my dates off. I think it's the uh, 15th. Um, so it starts again on Wednesday the 12th. Um, so it takes place 12th, 13th, and 14th. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing um, a, sort of a, a bit of a tour around Boston and what makes our um, what makes our healthcare ecosystem so unique? Why are we the uh, number one 
biotech hub in the world um, and what are um, some of the most um, interesting places um, in this healthcare universe, universe and what can you learn from them? Um, so here's just a, a quick slide of um, some of the places we'll be visiting. Um, and then I wanna walk you through a little bit about um, what we hope to learn over those three days because um, the healthcare trek is, you know, is more than, than um, doing some site visits um, and getting to see a little bit of the city. It really, um, we really want to make sure that um, each day you walk away um, uh, with, with some new knowledge, um, that you have some questions that you are reflecting on um, and that um, you might, uh, or that you, you will certainly take through um, the rest of the, uh, the boot camp. Um, so day one um, is, is about the spectrum of cutting edge healthcare. Um, you're going to be able to see um, the, uh, uh, what a community health center um, who deals with a very specific population here in the Boston area. Um, what are all the innovative things they are doing with the limited resources that they have? Um, and what, uh, what a hospital like Mass General Hospital does um, with the, the rich history of innovation that, um, that they have. Um, and, uh, and so the things that we want you to think about is again, how do resources, workflow and scale and population, how does that all impact your ability um, to innovate? And then we're also gonna be visiting that day um, Johnson & Johnson's uh, uh, Innovation Labs. And they're gonna talk about how they work with um, external startups to support more innovation in the healthcare system. Um, and sometimes those innovations continue on to work within Johnson & Johnson, but many times um, they operate more like an accelerator, just helping to create uh, better ideas in the healthcare ecosystem. Um, day two is about startups, industry, and the convergence of digital and pharma. So we'll start off the day uh, visiting a local venture capital firm, um, and they're going to talk about what um, they're excited about in healthcare, what are some of the trends that they're looking to invest in. Um, we're going to get to visit and spend quite a bit of time over at Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Um, and Vertex uh, has really put a lot of investment into digital health. Um, and they're gonna talk about why is that important in pharma and what do people expect um, uh, you know, to, to do within digital and pharma. So it's interesting, interesting time, um, especially in the Boston area with two big, uh, our two big areas are biotech and digital. Um, and so again, we'll be asking you to evaluate the opportunities that are trending in healthcare um, and, and what does it mean when we, we talk about the convergence of digital, digital and, um, and pharma. Um, and uh, the third day, we're going to focus around empathy, art, and entrepreneurship. Um, and we want to re-energize your, um, your skills of observation, which are a really important skill to have as entrepreneurs. Um, and, uh, and also how to reconnect with your entrepreneurial and personal aspirations um, at, as your role as an, as an innovator. Um, we'll also have some time. We have some uh, really great um, dinners set up and some opportunity to um, actually tour the city. Um, I, you know, I should have uh, started off by saying that this, this trek is in addition to the boot camp and unfortunately um, limited to about 25 people and we have reached full capacity. Having said that, if you um, have a deep interest in, in the trek, if you email us um, at bootcamp, bootcamp.mit.edu, um, you, uh, you can inquire about um, potentially being put on a wait list. Um, uh, but again, it should be a really energizing three days um, of exploring the city, exploring some of the great um, hospitals and um, uh, startups and industry folks that we have here in the Boston area. So I'll pass it back over to, um, to Vanessa now. Thank you, Paula, and uh, thank you everyone for our, the fantastic uh, presentation. Uh, what an exciting time. Our, I, uh, Vin's already introduced me, uh, so I'm going to uh, give you just a little bit of background. I was in the 2018 bootcamp as a participant, and um, I was uh, really excited at that point because I was uh, co-founding my company, uh, I Ophthalmology, and the ability to have used the framework from that particular bootcamp and apply it uh, to, uh, to my company afterwards was phenomenal because it just went from zero to 100 at that point. Um, in addition to that, what an incredible experience. I strongly encourage you to start to get to know each other as soon as you hit the ground. Uh, you know, you have uh, 70 of you that have been handpicked to come together and everyone has a story to tell and just hearing those different stories can really affect 
how you um, uh, can really affect your, sto your story moving forward and what happens after the bootcamp. Um, so I strongly encourage that. Uh, that was my personal experience. Uh, you know, we were the alumni um, uh, that you, uh, the alumni group that you will belong to afterwards is um, is uh, massively growing, and the connection and the ability for you to be able to dive deep into getting to know all the alumni is amazing. So start here. Uh, you know, that's what I, I encourage, and that's what I have from my experience. Um, one of my best experiences, obviously, uh, you know, being at the boot camp as a participant was to have the coaches work alongside us, uh, supporting us, uh, you know, guiding our uh, every move forward, helping us to critically think, um, you know, to, to, to be analytical and to help to move our thought processes forward. Um, you know, and to, to think that you went from ideation to actually pitching uh, somewhat of a viable uh, solution um, and commercial solution on a Friday was phenomenal. The transformation was incredible. And as a coach now, um, I am totally inspired by all of you, uh, you know, uh, because it's your passion, it's your transformation, it's your journey that you've invited us to be part of. And uh, that inspires all of us as coaches. We're all diverse, we're all, uh, you know, we all have way uh, different backgrounds. And I truly um, encourage you to get to know each one of us uh, you know, uh, during that week that you will, you'll be there, reach out to us. We're there to support you the best way we can, uh, you know, definitely through all the different aspects that you'll be going through in the week in order to, to, to build your, um, your venture from an unmet need to a viable, uh, commercialized solution. However, we're also there for your personal, uh, transformation because it is a transformative experience to go with working with a team that you've, are. Uh, probably never met before. And at the end of the week, you're, uh, you're as close as family could possibly be because you've been on a journey and that transformation is truly incredible and we're there to help to support that. Um, so I thank you. I hand you over to uh, Yambo to actually tell us a little bit more about his experiences, but I uh, am strongly uh, encouraging you to uh, do all the work, all the pre-work uh, that helps us out heaps during that week and uh, you know to enjoy the experience it's, it starts now so thank you thank you Vanessa um, and and thank you Vim and, and Paula it's um, just looking at uh, the all those those introductions of the programs and uh, the coaches it's just just got all the memories great memories I had in the book camp going in my mind um, so my name is Yuan Bo Liu. So I originally came from China, but I've been in the U.S. for eight years. Uh, right now, I'm the head of product for a mental wellness company called Super Better, and I've been um, involved as founding teams or co-founded several um, three companies in the mental well wellness area and also in professional development area. Um, so I'll, I'll share a, a bit of perspective from a recent participant of the healthcare book camp. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions and maybe I can also leave an email so anybody wants to reach out, you can. Um, the reason I came to the book camp was, first of all, I was the fan of the MOOCs, Erding and all of that. Um, and I wanted to push myself to keep growing and keep getting connected to more people who are in the front line of uh, healthcare innovation. So I came in with a very open mind, just trying to, to learn, learn from the lecturers, professors, uh, learn from the coaches and learn from, from uh, all the teammates and students and participants around me. And um, it was a really, really great experience. Um, uh, I'll say for me, three, biggest thing, uh, biggest takeaway I got from boot camp one was um, at a motivational level, the boot camp really created some momentum in, in, the, in my mind that I was able to, uh, to, to carry out and then use that to push myself to do better things. Uh, Vim already mentioned, I actually uh, am going to jo join uh, MIT for a master's degree this fall in engineering and management. 
uh, which I actually first learned from contacts uh, at the book camp. And so that's the first thing. It really creates momentum as long as you commit yourself to the learning process, to contributing to the team projects, you're going to feel accomplished at the end and you're going to feel um, a lot of motivation and a lot of uh, momentum going forward. So the second part will be personally um, is improvement on some of the uh, emotional and social intelligence in my part where I got to understand better how I would uh, work together with people for, uh, from diverse background because in this intensive bootcamp experience, uh, everything is heightened. And, um, and um, a good thing that your um, deadline every day would be at midnight. So it will push you to, to work more effectively and, and leave more time for sleep. But the reality for our camp is we'll have like every day around maybe four hours of sleep. So at that, in, in that state, Again, everything is heightened. Uh, you got to experience um, the whole team dynamic from, from forming and to getting into norms and all of that in uh, a matter of a week. So that experience for me improved really how I, how I would work in the team setting. And then the third part I would, I would say is um, it really um, just nails some of the strongest uh, entrepreneurial mindset that's really important for anybody who is interested in innovation and entrepreneurship. Things like the focus on truly understanding the problem instead of you know, um, holding a hammer and looking at everything as a nail. And also um, the, the the obsession to find that kind of market and market and product fit. So I will, I've been carrying those entrepreneurial mindset with me to help me to be, to, to do a better job. Um, uh, I would say if I, if I were to give one bigger, big suggestion, I would say uh, try to lock yourself into a open learning mindset. Uh, that's really what the whole bootcamp is about. Um, uh, you're here to learn from everybody and uh, I would say pragmatically the way to lock yourself into a learning mindset is to come up with the relatively specific goal like these are the people that I'm interested in building connections with these are I want to be connected with say five people who are uh, in say mental health that kind of specific goals would, would keep you locked in in this learning and connecting uh, mindset. And with, with that said, I'm really excited for, for all of you and you're going to have maybe even a better time than we did because I've seen a lot of great improvement already just in a matter of like 10 months uh, from our first uh, healthcare bootcamp. And good luck. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have. Um, and reach out to me too. Okay, thank you both uh, Vanessa and Yuanbo for sharing your experience. Uh, so we just have a few minutes left for questions and um, I see that there are, um, there are about 15 questions right now. Please, please put any other questions you have in here. Um, you know, we might be able to stay a few minutes afterwards to get these answered. Uh, I'm going to prioritize questions that are applicable for um, the whole group. Um, so I think there are a couple of questions in here that are um, more personal or uh, for a particular individual. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and prioritize in these next few minutes the ones that are applicable for everyone. Um, so Adriano has a few questions, um, sharing the list of participants um, to get in touch with them. So um, if you've put your deposit down, um, you'll be uh, getting a link to join Novo Ed um, later today. All participants will be on there and you can start to meet participants there. Um, we'll also be setting up a WhatsApp group um, for all, um, everyone who's put their deposit down as well. So you can start coordinating with people and meeting people through the, those two platforms. Um, we will have a schedule available on Novo Ed as well. Um, 
this will um, this will this is subject to change, but the the uh, broad outline will still be the same. The same. Um, another question is um, if the instructors will also be coaching. Um, the instructors won't be coaching, so the the coaches that we talked about will be the ones who are there in the evenings. Um, the instructors will be around, so Erdine will be around, um, I will be around as well. Um, the faculty will, there'll be um, a little bit of time to speak to them. There'll be, of course, the Q&A and then a little bit of time to speak to them after each of their presentations, um, but they won't be present for the coaching in the evenings. Um, so Hansa has a question about um, coming up with an idea. Um, so the, the format is that, um, you work together on a team and present that idea, um, and solution on demo day. So, um, you should be working with your team together to, um, to identify the idea that you'll be working on and, um, working as a team to develop that solution. If there is an idea, you know, that it possibly could be your own personal idea, um, that you've presented to that, to your team that's been selected. If not, um, the op what we what we really recommend is that this is an educational experience, and that you take what you've learned in the week um, and apply that to the particular idea you're interested in. Um, Raman is asking about accommodation. Um, I believe that's in the checklist. Um, Boston Hostel is one recommendation that's close to both um, Harvard Medical School campus and MIT campus. Um, Raman is also asking about university accommodation. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that available um, at, at MIT. I don't believe it's available at Harvard either um, during this time. I'll confirm that. Unfortunately, yeah, it, yeah we, don't, we also don't have university accommodations. Okay. Um, and then uh, Har Simranjot is asking about um, uh, social media groups. So there will be the WhatsApp group. Um, once you complete the boot camp, um, then you'll be added to the global alumni um, Facebook group, which currently has about a thousand alumni. Um, Stuthi has a question about the outcomes um, about the boot camp. Stuthi, um, I would recommend you watch the um, the whole presentation. This will answer a lot of your questions. Um, Peter. Um, is asking about ventures created from the boot camp. So um, we've had more than 10 um, open admissions boot camps in particular. This is our second healthcare innovation boot camp. Um, boot campers from the first, um, I'd say eight boot camps, um, those are the ones we have data for, have raised about $70 million towards their businesses. Um, so there have been, um, there has been quite a, quite a bit of success from um, boot camp alumni. Um, there have been several uh, companies that have started out uh, from the boot camp itself where people met their co-founders. Um, we just recently met with um, Quick Brazil, which started two and a half years ago in Brisbane. Um, and they've just, um, they have about $250,000 in revenue just at the end of their first year. Um, then, um, uh, we do last year the winners of the boot camp. Um, it's uh, looking at uh, opening up airwaves from the healthcare boot camp. Uh, Julio, who's a medical doctor based in um, Australia, is continuing forward with that business as well. Um, and uh, while we, while I haven't, I don't know of any acquisitions. Um, there are quite a few companies that um, are doing quite quite well. Um, Amas Sanjua is asking about the African context. Um, that uh, most of the regulatory issues that we'll be discussing or regional issues will mostly be focused on the US context, um, though there will be um, you know, applications uh, in other regional contexts, though the specific learnings um, will be more focused on US experience. Um, you'll be able to get a lot of the other um, regional context from, um, from your, your teammates. Um, so there's a question about Boston Hostel. Um, 
then, um, so we'll just take a couple more questions. Um, uh, so someone is asking about attending lectures via uh, online. Uh, this, this boot camp is only, um, it's an in-person boot camp, so only available to those who, um, who attend in person. Um, okay, lodging recommendations. Um, so that's in the checklist. Um, and the, um, the boot camp itself will be between Harvard Medical School campus and MIT campus. You'll be getting more details and specific addresses through the Novo Ed platform. Um, so uh, the background, background of boot campers, um, that's actually on our website if you go and look at um, our admissions criteria. Um, and parking, um, I don't think there are um, specific uh, parking um, lots for, uh, for people. Um, I, I, I don't think we'll be able to provide that um, for people who are driving in. Um, and then someone is asking about working with startups. So uh, you'll meet several startups during the trek if you're on the trek. Um, otherwise, there will be, um, you'll actually be placed on pretty diverse groups and you'll be coming up with the ideas and the solutions as a group. Um, and then someone is asking about the Slido questions. So most of those have been actually, a lot of people have answered them or they were incorporated into the, um, the presentation itself. Um, someone is asking about the reading and the online courses. It's very important that you do the pre-reads and um, the course, the online courses, at least view the videos, because um, we teach from the, uh, the basis that you've gone through all of the curriculum already. And um, we're not teaching what is in the boot camp, what, what are in the videos um, and courses already. Um, and then a final question um, asking about whether it's safe to travel at night. Um, the subways run until about um, midnight or one o'clock. Um, they are quite safe, buses as well. Um, after that, um, you know, Uber and Lyft are quite available. Um, and if you're staying within Boston, um, these are relatively short rides and um, it's, it's relatively economical to, to travel that way as well if it's, if it's quite late. Okay, um, so I think we'll wrap up here. Um, I just want to thank all the other panelists, um, Paula, I think she had, to, she might have had to go, um, Yonbo and Vanessa, thank you for joining in, um, and Thomas and Mariah, I don't, I don't think you can see Mariah, but um, the two of you have done a lot to, to put all of this together and make it um, run smoothly, and I was very happy to see, you know, 90 plus participants um, on the webinar and hoping to see and meet many of you in person in a couple of weeks. Thank you all.